I sang that song for more than 60 years, a song of praise to Joseph Smith, the prophet of the restoration and founder of the LDS Church, the church I served as a bishop for five years. I knew the church was true. I was a faithful Latter-day Saint. My life has been built on certain truths, but wishing doesn't change the truth. Jesus said, you shall know the truth, and the truth will make you free. When I finally learned the truth about the real history and doctrines of Mormonism, I realized that I was following the gospel of Joseph Smith and not the gospel of Jesus Christ. I have come to learn that many others have made a similar journey out of the bondage of religion and into an authentic relationship with Jesus. And that's what this show is all about. Courageous people who want to share their story hoping that you, the viewer, will discover the same new life in Jesus. So if you're a Latter-day Saint who is struggling with questions or seeking a genuine encounter with the Savior, we invite you to join us tonight. We have a joyful message that we want to share with you. Hi, and welcome to another episode of the Ex-Mormon Files. I'm your host, Bishop Earl, and I appreciate you spending some time with us. I'm really pleased tonight, today, to introduce to you Dan Lewis. Dan, uh, our stories somewhat parallel each yeah. other in many ways. Long time in the church, and yeah. uh, all of a sudden things just aren't quite what they were. That's right? for sure. <laughs> <laughs> well, as we do usually, you, where were you born? I was born in uh, Logan. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Grew up in Cache Valley and uh, in went active, to school there. Active yeah. family, was it? Uh, yeah, yeah, very active. 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 Uh, mostly led by my mother. My, yeah. My dad kind of went along and became a high priest just because he kept going, you know. And <laughs> Got older and made him yeah. a high priest. That happens, but, doesn't uh, it? But, you know, my dad got saved. Uh, he, he had had a heart attack at, uh, like, just before he turned 80. Oh my goodness. And uh, my wife Marta went into intensive care while I guarded the door, and she he prayed the sinner's prayer, and Except and then we Jesus. he lived a couple more years, and and uh, we had a little secret between it. He could never could tell anybody else, but oh, is that right? He's, well, the, he, the he cat's out now. Again. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> How exciting. Yeah. But you were active, I mean, seminary and Four years. Scouting, I, I, guess, I was in the and... first group. I don't know how widespread it was, but in, in our little valley, I was in the first group that started four years of seminary. Up oh, until then, yeah. it had been three, three years. years while so you're four in high years school. of uh, yeah. of seminary. Yeah. yeah, good testimony of the church. And oh, absolutely. Book of Mormon yeah, and... just that little recording you push that uh, <laughs> when know. all else fails, bear your the testimony. Church is true. <laughs> yeah. you know, it's funny, even even uh, the ones that we would call Jack Mormons. If you'd back them into a corner, they would Repeat they would still them. bear yeah. their testimony. You know, I know I might not be living right, but I know. Joseph Smith, and then on yeah. and on. And yeah, the Book of Mormon's so, yeah. true and all that stuff. Yeah. Oh, that's interesting. Well, I, uh, and you believed, of course, the re what we call the restored gospel. I mean, that it had to be, there was an apostasy and a restoration. I, I and, believed it Yeah. Um, because that's the only thing I ever heard. Yeah. That's the only thing. I didn't know anybody who was not a Mormon in, in my little valley at that Cash time. Cash Valley, huh? Um, and the only thing I knew about other church, I knew there were Baptists and I knew there were Catholics. Yeah. And and they were wrong. Of course. You know, since you were in the only, I knew, only you know. true church. That's right. right. Yeah. yeah. That and funny? so as a member of the only true church, why would I need to look elsewhere? Why why would I even and why would I even need to open the Bible if it's you can't trust it yeah, because that's right. it might not be translated correctly. Isn't that, isn't especially if it funny? doesn't agree with the, the Point they're trying to make. We've sure learned a lot, haven't we, in the we last have. few years? Well, so after high school, what happens? After high school, I uh, I went to a year of college and uh, was waiting for a mission call. Oh. Um, but got drafted into the U.S. Oh. Navy instead. Yeah. Back then, that was in 1965. Right. Uh, Vietnam was getting hotter and hotter, and uh, the Navy drafted a few people. They drafted three people from the state of Utah. I was one of and them. You it was the first first group since the Korean War that the Navy had drafted. Yeah, that's right. Cause so it's usually I, uh, the army that drafts. Yeah, and and so I got Somehow to go to boot camp name. in San Diego in the winter, okay. which was great. Yeah. I mean, you know, for boot yeah. camp, and then right. from there I was one of only three people from my company that got stationed on the East Coast, 
wow. where we went to the Mediterranean and the Caribbean instead of Vietnam. So Ooh, that looks good. Yeah, <laughs> it was. Uh, I, I I look back and I can see the hand of God on me even then, even though yeah. I had no clue. Now you was. were a good Mormon boy, I guess. Oh, absolutely. This time and, yeah. yeah. In fact, it, it's interesting that I had two of my buddies that were on missions while I was at the same time I was in the Navy. Yeah. We, we both came home, we all three came home at the same time, and, and we'd go out to uh, movie or party or yeah. whatever. I'd be the driver because I wasn't drinking. And they were? And they were, oh, certainly. The return drinking. missionaries. Yeah. I guess anyway, a little freedom there on their part. I won't mention part. their names, but no. they know who they are. <laughs> <laughs> well, you end up getting married. I did. Uh, now, did you end up in school or, or go to school? I, I did go to school. I got out of the Navy, and uh, the GI Bill paid my, my schooling, so I finished okay. at Utah State. Oh, great. Um, I, you know, I didn't really like BYU even when I was a good Mormon. I, I, you know, I, me, I was an Aggie all either, the time. darn it. <laughs> <laughs> but, As a matter of fact, you live in Florida now. And yeah, I do. You actually came out here from Florida to go to the... homecoming. Well, game. actually, this was a, supposed to be a dual trip. I was... I was uh, felt like we needed to come out and visit my sister who was uh, 86 oh, years old and, and she passed away a couple of weeks ago um, and um, so now there's just the football game left so. oh, okay. and we'll spend some time with family and things and, so. and this interview so I, and this interview, I appreciate yeah. you so much being coming and making contact oh so anyway you you meet your uh, wife uh, and while I was in in college at Utah yeah. State, and uh, we were married in the temple, Logan Temple. There, I had four children. Okay, and uh, she was good. I mean, she was. Oh, we were we were it. active in the temple. We did. Uh, we, yeah. we, you know, I was in in uh, two different wards. I was in the bishopric as a counselor, mm -hmm. in two different wards in in Idaho. And just never any question in your mind that the church was, wasn't true, right? No, I mean, I, just... there's uh, no reason to question because yeah. the, the whole process in growing up from, from at least for us who were born in the church, that's all you ever heard. It's here, it's the only true church yeah. and all others are an abomination to God. And that's reinforced, if not weekly, at least on fast Sundays. Uh, yeah, Sunday, yeah, you know, yeah. Reinforced that's... that. We're in the only true church. And, yeah, and I might not have been very bright, but I know enough <laughs> not to mess with an abomination to God. You know? yeah. I, and <laughs> so uh, I just stayed away from, from study or, or anything. Oh, my. Yeah. So what happens? You get going on in life with four well, kids? Well, we, uh, we were living in Idaho Falls and, and uh, actually moved back to Cache Valley. I got a job uh, teaching at one of the schools in the district here. Huh. And... and uh, we were having some marital problems hmm. and uh, had a divorce. And that can be devastating. Can it was it? devastating. It was uh, because as a as a male Mormon, um, what do you do? I mean, I felt like such a failure. Well, yeah, because you're gearing up for the celestial kingdom. Well, uh, yeah, and, and even though we didn't get along that well. I, I was her ticket into the celestial kingdom. Yeah, she's, as, she's because a woman you. can't get there alone, you know. Uh, and and I just felt such a failure. Oh. And, and and that little song came up to me that uh, have I done any good in the world today? Have I helped anyone in need? Have yeah. I cheered up the sad and made someone feel glad? If not, I have failed indeed. Mm -hmm. And that's what I felt. Well, I, you're, I was you're really just carrying a burden. Really, now. such a failure. And I was. I was to the point of, of taking my own life. Oh my. And uh, you know, I, I shared this testimony for the first time. I used to teach at a Christian school in, in Portland and I shared at a retreat and I hadn't heard myself give this testimony oh, before really? and I was, I was in tears before it was over. I didn't, uh, I didn't realize what was that because my own kids were there hearing this how for the first how time too. How depressing you were. How depressed you were. Yeah, how and, uh, and I was... Failure. You, you know, they say sometimes that it's a, a cry for help, that it's, you know, you don't really mean to do it. I meant to do it. I had a shotgun with three shells, and, you know, out in the country, people are always hunting, and yeah. and uh, so I shot two shots. The third one is going to be for myself. Oh, my. And I was, funny, I'm looking for a comfortable place to do it, you know, in the in the weeds and stuff. And here my son, six-year-old, comes out looking for his dad. He's hearing the gunshots. He wants to see what dad's doing. Oh my goodness. And and I 
the hand of God just grabbed me Pushed right in. Pushed him right into your and, area. And it's, it's amazing how, how warped your thinking can be in, yeah. in stressful times like that. When you're stuck with rules and regulations mm -hmm. and guidelines and you fall short of that, then, yeah, it's, yeah. You, know, you feel like you're out of control. You've right. made a mistake that you can't repair. Yeah, yeah. there's no way out of it. And, and my, my opinion through all those years, all, the whole time I was a member of the Mormon Church, was um, these other religions, you know, they were, they were good people. I met good people in yeah. my wife's church. Sure. And... Uh, but they were wrong. And I, I thought that for some reason they just had a license to live any way they wanted. Eat, drink, and Didn't beer. realize <laughs> that, that, you know, a committed Christian is living a lot better, cleaner life than I was uh, most of the time Mormon. as a Mormon. Yeah. Even though we claim to be the clean ones. The, well, after you divorced, then did you meet your future wife? I uh, did. Right I away? Did. I, was, I was coaching at uh, one of the high schools in the valley and... Uh, had to go into a, a Sunset Sporting Goods, which doesn't exist anymore fly either. Fly here today. Yeah, and uh, had to pick up uh, my coaching outfit for game day. We yeah. all the coaches wear the same yeah. uniform, so I was in there. She waited on me. Oh, she did. Uh, yeah, and uh, I asked her, uh, "Would you like to go to a dance?" Really? <laughs> well, she was a good Baptist girl. Did you and know she that was, at the time? No, I didn't know anything other than this was this was a well, and, and it had to be the spirit of God even in because I my mind was mind was made up. I'm done with women, you know. I'm I don't yeah, well, uh, sure yeah yeah, and I and I just again. was so drawn to her. It was like just talking to her. It was like we'd known each other forever. Oh uh, so I asked her if she would want to go to to a dance, and and she said uh, she's she's from Europe, from Hungary, and she said she could see her mother pointing her finger across the ocean, you know, you'll go to hell if you go to, if you dance, you know. So uh, we didn't dance. I, we, oh. we did go to a restaurant and had a dinner, but, yeah. and then she the next day I proposed that, to her. Really? Yeah. My goodness, the yeah. spirit was definitely well, yeah, guiding you, you along. You don't rush into things like that, so yeah. I waited a day. Yeah. Well, now she ends up taking you to some Christian churches along the way, and what she happens was, there? Uh, she was going to a, a little church in Logan, did you think you were going to convert her first of all? That's a that's the only reason I was there. Yeah, yeah. So um, you figured you were going to get her to come into. Yeah, place, I'm sure. it, it was, it was during there were a lot of hippies going to this church. I yeah. was the only one that showed up in a in a jacket and tie. Yeah. Um, and you know, for a little Mormon guy who had been raised with you know reverence, fold your arms, and the only amen is at the end of the prayer, right. the closing prayer, and now they're people are actually saying amen and hallelujah and stuff out loud while yeah. the pastor's speaking. Yeah. But in their foyer, they, they had these, what I call anti-Mormon tracts. Oh. That I, you know, I knew that they were written by people who just had been offended or whatever. They were just trying to lash out at the church. Right. So I sneaked a few in my pocket because my goal was to prove these people. I didn't get to, get to go on my mission. Yeah. So this was my mission field. I was I was going to uh, prove to these people, show these people the truth, you know. But you know, knowing that they know the Bible, I I've got to really dig. Brigham Young said, "Compare the Bible." He said, "Study it out and yeah, see if it did. doesn't stand the stand yeah, the test stand against the, test. the Book of Mormon." Yeah. Well, the more I studied, the the worse it got. You know, we you like to say that you shall know the truth, and the truth will make you free, but uh, sometimes it'll beat you up first before. <laughs> I mean, and you have to accept it. It's it, it's not going to really set you have free. You go where the truth leads. You, you have right? to. You have to. You know, because I know there are people who see the same evidence that I saw, yeah. and they they are somehow able to ignore it. Now, um, there are some who see the truth that the Mormon church is not what it claims to be. And I guess their thinking is if the only true church isn't true, you know, why, you yeah. know, there must not be one. That worries us a lot because a lot of the people that are coming out of the church don't have that anchor right. in Jesus. They, 
They think the church, like you've said before, the, the Bible, they don't trust the Bible. They don't trust any other church. Uh, and if the, new, if the true church isn't true, then mm -hmm. what have I got to yeah. anchor? Yeah, but I, I thank God that I had a, a core group of people, including my wife and, and some other people from that church, who lifted me up in prayer during that whole process. Um, Be patient with you so you could yeah. learn the truth, huh? Yeah, well, because it was funny. The day I met my wife, there was a laundromat right behind the sporting goods store. Yeah. Everything I had was in that in the washing machine in there. <laughs> yeah. And, and so I had just a, like a t-shirt and shorts on. That the night that I picked her up to take her out to dinner, I had my temple garments on, oh. which you you know in the summertime, if you got a light shirt, you can see that see little right smile yeah. under there. So right, right. <laughs> she. Wasn't sure what she had gotten into at that point because she recognized the, the signs. Yeah. But. So you go through this study process and did it, did it kind of like, well, wait a minute, this isn't what I thought it was? Or no, you it started was, learning it, more, right? It made me angry at first. Did it? I, I just, well, first of all, I thought this, these people are lying. This cannot well, be true. And then you find out. And then I study, and, and probably the most convincing thing are right within the Mormon writings and scriptures themselves yeah. because there are contradictions that I was taught were never there. I mean, it's the most perfect book ever written, the Book of Mormon, and I find out there's almost no Mormon doctrine in the Book of Mormon. I was shocked at that when yeah. I came out. I didn't, it never occurred to me until somebody said that and I thought, yeah, yeah there's no three degrees of glory or baptism for the dead or uh, we can become gods. Polygamy is right. denounced. Yeah, basically. Yeah, so. a lot of what the the church promotes Mormon is doctrine. actually taught against in the Book of Mormon. Yeah, and and then I found out about the changes that had been made from the 1830 edition well, to the one they're using now. Yeah, that absolutely. Got and me. and I thought, now how can you change God's holy word? Who who authorized that change? Joseph Smith isn't. Here anymore? Yeah. Um, if it was the most perfect book, how can you make it more perfect? And these aren't just punctuation and spelling; these are doctrinal yeah. differences. Uh, somebody changed it because it it wasn't right. Well, still not right, but yeah. <laughs> well, did you have a moment when you finally stepped back and looked at the bigger picture and thought, oh, Yeah, what, what happened with that? I I came to the point where where I you know, there was just overwhelming evidence that what I had been taught was wrong. That's hard to take. That's yeah. a hard pill to swallow. And yet there's so much of it. Absolutely. True, but but it's hard to yeah. it's hard to comprehend that we've been deceived yeah. and your family's been deceived. And, Th that's it. Yeah, and, and for all these years. And the other thing is recognizing that if I step out of this, I'm stepping out of everything social everything, all, all the dances, the sports, everything yeah. that the church was promoting yeah. that I liked yeah. um, was, was connected it's to that. Social. Teaching in the schools that I taught in the district oh, were, yeah. it was almost like being in a private school, which was great because there were Mostly probably 90% or more of the kids were, were from LDS families. <laughs> and uh, so it was, it was a hard decision, the hardest thing I've ever had to do. Once I made that decision that well, first of all, if, if there is a God, that's the first thing I had to come to. If there is a God, yeah. he's not the God of Mormonism. Ooh, that's a tough one. It, it was. Yeah. And, and, you know, that's, you know the, the bottom line was, first of all, I had to choose God or no God. Well, did you have a born-again moment then, kind of? Yeah, that? I did. Yeah. I did. We, uh, we were at... Uh, which I don't think LDS really understand right. the beauty of what John 3 uh, is telling us, yeah. that we must be born again, yeah. born of the Spirit. And, well, because there, there's a lot of Mormon teaching that actually is, is contrary to that. I, Doctrine and Covenants, uh, I think section 130, uh, says that, that the Spirit of God can't live in man. But then there are other Mormon uh, scriptures that say, he does. Yeah. So which one, since there are no contradictions in it, how do you figure that out? Yeah. But we went to a, uh, came to Salt Lake, and I think it was a South High School. There was a, uh, a second chapter of Acts concert hmm. back in whenever that was, 
I've, I've been out of the church longer than I was in it now. So that's. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah. You were in um, it for like 32. 32 years? years I was in. Wow. But uh, during that second chapter of Acts concert, uh, God just tugged on my heart enough that uh, I, I yielded my life to him. And, uh, oh my goodness. and my life got better in many ways, but my, <laughs> my employment got worse. Yeah. Was, yeah. Because of, because of coming. Well, cause sharing. you know, and I, I tried to keep it quiet. I didn't really, um, make a big deal out of coming out of the Mormon church. Uh, in fact, I didn't officially do it. I just, in my heart, I left. Yeah. I mean, I, what's a piece of paper anyway? Right. So, uh, it was six or seven years before I finally made it official with with the church, mm. um, but it it was uh, it was disaster in my job because they you know in the little valley word gets around mm. even if you don't want it to, and uh, I found myself being assigned different different teaching positions, different coaching positions. Just kind of gets that, you out of the way. Yeah, a bit, yeah. and uh, and replacing me with good Mormon. People. guys you know well i know we were kind of laughing before even the interview just we can't believe that this has all happened to us oh i we? know i mean i would have never thought that i would have traded in my garments for a cross and traded uh, my celestial kingdom but but it's so joyful it is to to think to un did you understand grace at all as a mormon no no not at all i thought i did yeah. i thought i you know, but Mormon grace is not the same as no. as the grace of God that, that we know you, as When you can as accept believers. that Jesus paid for our sins oh. and we're only righteous in God's eyes because of his righteousness. Yeah, that's right. Nothing we can do to earn our way. Absolutely. And yet that temple boy, that uh, oh. you got to be doing all the check marks. Yeah. Now you and your wife do missionary service we do. over we, the uh, world. You've been in a lot of places. Tell us a little bit. We lived in, in Europe. We lived in, in uh, Hungary for 11 years. Our first missionary assignment was in Mongolia, oh of all goodness. places. Yeah. And um, now is that English speaking? Or did oh, you... no. I, that's why I know God has a sense of humor. <laughs> because to me, the two most difficult languages in the world are Mongolian <laughs> and Hungarian. And he sent me to both places. <laughs> but my wife is Hungarian, so she's my translator. And they think I'm an excellent teacher over there, but well, it's really her. So. <laughs> so has this been a you're you're helping people come to know Jesus right, and that right yeah. yeah we work mainly our our main work well we started with Bible schools we had Bible schools in Hungary and the surrounding country we had 23 Bible schools going at one time over there now we do it um, strictly on on audio where we put it in the church um, and there's there's two main churches that we're working with one in Hungary and one in Romania they are. Uh, Roma churches, gypsy churches for oh the, goodness. but Roma is the uh, yeah. politically correct word nowadays. And so we've been doing that for, well, this is our 21st year in, in official ministry. We were ministering before that, but. Wow. And the we, name of your ministry? Is? Light to the Nations Ministries. Light to the Nations. Taken from Isaiah uh, 42, 6. And, uh, so back in when you were 19 years old, you got drafted in the Navy yeah, instead was, of in on a mission. Yeah. And now look at you, yeah. serving all over the world. And yeah. You're like Paul out there, do you? Teaching. Well, I, I don't know about that. <laughs> I, I don't have to walk and you know, yeah. we, get to yeah, ride cars or something. But, yeah. Well, what a joyful thing. Well, I, I mean, it's pretty obvious that Jesus and the Bible just mean so much differently to you now. Oh, they now. do. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. And, and see, that's the thing. Once, once I found out that I can trust the Bible, yeah, well, then I can guessed. then I can go ahead and study it. You know, yeah. and, um, because up until up until that time when I started to study, yeah. um, the Bible wasn't trustworthy. Well, and can you believe I I didn't know this at all? All the manuscripts and all the support, and certainly the Dead Sea Scrolls mm -hmm. now, but all this information proving that the the Bible is trustworthy. Yeah. I mean, yeah. it's certainly as trustworthy as any book ever. Well, and, and, and Joseph Smith comes in and, and all the changes that he made, none yeah. of them have ever been supported right. by any documentation. Well, and that's the thing. You look at the archaeological evidence in, in Europe and especially in the Holy Land and what should be some archaeological evidence in the, uh, in the Book of Mormon oh. countries, yeah. uh, there's none. No. Uh, it's, it's just... 
mind-boggling to to see the evidence that is actually available. Yeah. If if anybody's, and it's not hard to get at. It's it's easy. Well, I think that's the funny thing. I mean, I've he I've heard so many that even the LDS essays that the church has written, more current active Mormons sometimes say. Well, why do I need to look at those? I already know what I believe. Yep. Yeah. Uh, and yet they, and they're not perfect, but they at least pr present some things that a Mormon should really question. And it's so much out there. Yeah. I probably would have never left the church had I not been trying to, to prove my church was True. the only way to go. <laughs> I, seriously. I, Isn't there that was funny? No, no reason to, to look elsewhere. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we've got just a minute or so. Is there something you'd like to share with family, friends, or? Well, I don't know, you've probably got um, lots of I don't know family, how many family, family friends will be watching this, well, but uh, hopefully some. You know, but people who are looking, people who are wondering, may be hearing this. And and the first thing I want to say is that uh, we we can't we can't confront people with with anger and and loudness. It has to be done by sharing the truth in love. Yeah. And I guess, if anything, I'd like to share my testimony <laughs> that I know that the Bible is reliable. It is the Word of God. It is translated correctly. And those who think otherwise really don't understand the process that was was undertaken mm. to translate that yeah. that work. And uh, yeah, I'm staking my life on it and my yeah. my afterlife too. The Gospel of Grace. Amen. And, and so family, your four kids, did they follow All, all along? four kids uh, came out. I, I wrote the letter to the, the presiding bishopric. And, uh, but all four and children were born in the church. They, they were. Only one was baptized. Only oh, okay. one was, uh, the, the oldest son was, was baptized. Before and the divorce. So, but we, when we moved to Idaho, and I, I was convinced, I a general conference when they're telling all the membership of the church. Yeah. Uh, I finally realized they're counting me in that, oh, and yeah, so yeah. that's that's the main reason. So I, I worked with Ed Decker and and Jim Spencer uh, a bit, and and so they gave me some information on what to write and, and all that. And got your name removed. Yeah, actually. got my name removed. But your kids of all kind. That must be a great feeling to to know that your family's with you. I've still got a couple in the church, mm -hmm. and uh, we pray for them a lot. And yeah. Hopefully God will open their eyes, but. And it's fun to see how God's worked in your life, hasn't it? It is, yeah. yeah. And all four are born again, and we've got uh, ten grandkids now. So Well, and you have such a sweet wife. Yeah. She is a, uh, a delight, and uh, I know she's meant a lot to my wife. So, yeah. Dan, thanks so much for coming and Thank sharing you. your story. Thank you. Appreciate and it. We'll see you next time.